reminds me about we're talking about organic. I have, I, there's an excellent study that was done by Rutgers University where they actually compared organic vegetables with non-organic. And if you take a look at every single case, the organic was much higher in calcium, magnesium, and potassium. I mean, like, even if you look at lettuce, like organic lettuce, look at the potassium in organic lettuce compared to non-organic, which was the commercial. Like it was 176.5 on the organic compared to 53.7. So at the very minimum, we want to be doing more organic for vegetables and fruits, you know, whenever we can. Oh, as far as the pesticides go, um, I heard that it was it doesn't have an effect on your health necessarily. They don't have any evidence that it affects your health. It's just better for the environment to do um, organic. Do you, do you agree? No, because the thing is, you, uh, you don't have as much nutrition in the, in the um, foods that have been but used But I mean, the pesticides, pesticides aren't harmful. Um, that's a very good question. It, it can be for some people if they can't detox properly the pesticides. Because, you know, again, genetically we all have different abilities at detoxing. And some people have a worse ability to detox than others. And that puts them at a higher cancer risk. Um, because they definitely have found that pesticides do increase cancer risk. Um, and if you don't have a way to detox it out of your body, then it puts you at a higher cancer risk. Okay, so that's not quite, yeah, so wherever you heard that, that was Okay, good. Um, did you have some of your question? Okay, great. Anybody else here? All right, super. Yeah, so really, so really, there is a difference between, and this was done by Rutgers University, and then another study was done a few years later by Texas A&M, and they got the same results, even in a different part of the country. So it's really, there's definitely um, no, no comparison between that. And if you can grow your own fruits and vegetables, like have your own garden, that's even better. So that's the ideal situation. Okay. All right, and then I definitely want to talk a little about caffeine because I know probably many of you, how many of you here drink coffee? I'm just curious. Wow, almost all of you. Okay. Um, so a little bit of coffee is beneficial, but too much actually works against you. So I usually recommend no more than a cup of coffee. If you're very small, then half a cup of coffee. Okay, so it's much better to switch over to green tea for your caffeine. So use the green tea as caffeine. Um, so seven and a half cups of green tea is equivalent to one cup of coffee. So you really can drink a lot more green tea. Um, I just have a question about green tea. Is there something else that is similar to green tea that is not green tea? <laughs> Do you green like white tea? tea? Oh, I don't, I, yeah, there is white tea, uh -huh. which has I'm just not the biggest fan of tea in general, but green tea is like number one on green tea lists. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. So try white tea. Like they have fruit flavored white teas. You probably would like that. If you like fruit flavored uh, teas. Uh, that's not so bad. Okay. <laughs> Trader Joe's makes a pomegranate white tea. Oh, it's really delicious. Good. Yeah. It's it's good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> if, uh, um, if the green tea is cold, it doesn't make any difference from it being warm, does it? Um, okay, actually, no, but you know what's interesting? Like is, yeah, right. Um, heat increases metabolism. So if you can drink hot tea versus cold tea, actually it will help metabolism better. So that, in that sense, it does make a little bit of a difference. Uh, what's the deal with black tea? Like, is that not <laughs> good? Um, like no, actually black tea has a benefit to it. The only problem is that it has much more caffeine than green tea. But like it'd be a good substitute for coffee. It, it is definitely a good, good substitute for coffee, provided you don't drink it in excess. Because too much black tea interferes with iron absorption. People, there is such a thing as iron-induced anemia, um, basically from um, drinking too much black tea. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear what you were saying. If you can get it decaffeinated, would that be better, or do they do something funky to it to make it Yeah, sometimes they use chemicals to extract the caffeine, but the other thing is, a lot of the antioxidants in tea and in coffee is actually in the caffeine part. So if you are drinking coffee or if you are drinking tea, you're much better off drinking the real tea or the real coffee with the caffeine. So just the, just the amount so the caffeine doesn't affect you. Because the problem with caffeine, too much caffeine is it affects cortisol levels, which is um, your stress hormones, and that will make the body more stressed if you overdo the caffeine. So that's why it's better not to do too much caffeine. Okay, and it also disrupts, it's a hormone disruptor too. I mean, it interferes with sleep, and sleep is very important, you know, for recuperating the muscles, okay, your ligaments, I mean, that's why that's really important. Really Okay. And then another thing that I really recommend for athletes and for dancers is to do hot baths, like mineral baths with Epsom salts, because um, they don't have them. These are fresh in their dorms. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Well, we so when you can, when you can. <laughs> <laughs> not this That's year. It drains. It doesn't, like, it's not like a... So, thank you. 
Okay, so actually then what you can do, I have a solution to that if you can't do the bathtubs. Are you allowed to have like plastic containers in the room? Are they yeah. able to do that? <laughs> so you can actually do, um, if your upper body is sore, then you do a hand soap for like 15, 20 minutes with extra salt and as hot water as you can tolerate. And then with your legs, particularly if you're sore in the calf muscles or in the hamstring muscles, what you can do is do a foot soap. So when you make sure that the water comes right above the ankle bone, okay, and then just keep it, you know, keep both feet submerged for like 15, 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. Oh yeah, because you know those are your detox points, like the soles of your feet and then the palms of your hand. So that helps the body to really like, remove um, basically the lactic acid. Mm -hmm. um, and we were just told by another teacher that um, I was fat for the most part of the but you, you... You can do both. You can definitely do both. Like, like alternate. If you're doing a full body bath, you can do an ice bath, okay? Or you can do an Epsom, or you can do the Epsom salt bath. Um, but for the hand and the feet, um, the, F, the hot water with the Epsom salt would be better for feet and hands, okay? So that's another way to help detox the body from any kind of soreness, you know, lactic acid buildup. And it also helps to regenerate and, and also puts electrolytes back into the body. So because you're absorbing that through the palms of the hand and the soles of the feet. That's the other advantage too. Yeah, it kind of has nothing to do with that. That's but, okay. Okay. But um, I have a huge weakness, weakness for like dark sodas, like Coke in particular. Exactly how bad is that for you? If okay. you have a Coke a day. One Coke a day? Yeah. Okay. And that's really like why it's so bad. Because it's leaching minerals from your bone. And that could be your spinal bone, it could be your hip bone, it could be anywhere in the body. So you're at a much higher risk for osteoporosis down the road. That 